So this is the question. A service elevator takes a load of garbage, mass, um, so takes some object of some mass from a floor of something under whatever, I don't care, and down to ground level, uh, accelerating downward at a rate of one, some acceleration. Let me start labeling uh, some of these things with the labels I'll, I'll be using. M1, um, uh, this, oh, not M2, <laughs> acceleration. Find the magnitude of the force the garbage exerts on the floor. First, the garbage exerts on the floor. Um, all right, let me label it F of the service elevator. Round your answer one this place. Oh, by the way, this is something that you're fixing. Uh, you shouldn't be seeing this. We just got it fixed. So um, it's, uh, by the way, if you're somehow working ahead in your homework set and see this, um, uh, know that we are working to address it as we progress through the semester. So, you know, your homework questions, if you answer most of them with 1% accuracy, it should be fine. Um, um, yeah, so you, you shouldn't have to be more precise than 1% most of the time. So, as you read this question, um, if you are kind of feeling lost, um, that's the feeling I'm trying to simulate and uh, I don't know, empathize with. And uh, um, what I would recommend that you do is start out with a free body diagram. You know that's the, your first step. So one thing that you do know is that this question involves force. If it involves force, you're going to have to go through standard strategy. And the very number one step in the standard strategy is drawing your free body diagram. So I would just start out with that. Um, that's something you're gonna have to do. And as you're drawing the free body diagram, you might understand the question better. You might have come up with an idea on how to answer it. So let me just draw a free body diagram. I saw an object again mentioned. That's the, uh, the, this thing, load of garbage or uh, some mass. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram for mass, M1. And um, let me label what I know about the mass. Um, oh, I know there's gravity on the mass, so there's going to be a downward force of M1G. Now, I think I was, yeah, I was told about the acceleration of this mass. So it's down, accelerating downward at A. And this A that's given, I will note that it's not equal to G, uh, which means this cannot be the only force. I must have other forces. So this is where I will slow down and think about, oh, what other force is there? I have um, elevator, oh, this is me just doodling. Sometimes just doodling stuff help me think about things. I have some garbage, it's kind of sitting here, and it is accelerating downward, um, but it's, uh, I already drew gravity, which is making it accelerate it downward, but not quite enough. What other force could there be? And this is where I'm hopefully eventually realizing that, oh, this is touching the elevator floor. So there's a normal force coming up from the elevator floor. So I must also draw the normal force here. And, um, okay, uh, that kind of helps me figure it out. So I'm given the masses, acceleration. Um, so I, I guess so the information I have is, I have enough information to figure out the normal force. And you know I can go through the remainder of the standard strategy and what you will realize is that, okay, so I solve for the normal force and you realize that the question isn't asking for the normal force. The question is asking for the force of the garbage exerts on the floor. And this normal force, for clarity's sake, is the normal force on garbage by floor. So what you really need here, because you are looking for the force on the floor, you actually need a second free body diagram um, to be perfectly formally correct. So let me draw the second start, or let me start the drawing second free body diagram. So the second free body diagram would be that of the elevator. It's this thing that I kind of started drawing here. It's the elevator. And 
and I need to know uh, the garbage it's touching here, so it will be pushing downward. So I need a, a, the downward push um, on elevator by garbage. And I guess there's other forces. And I'm hoping as you draw this that you realize one thing, that um, this force that I'm starting to label here it's sounding a lot like it's a reaction force for the normal force on the garbage. You can kind of see it as I'm diagramming it here. The elevator floor is pushing up on garbage and the garbage is pushing down on the elevator floor. So you recognize that these two are action reaction force pairs. Once you realize that, then, then I don't actually need to finish drawing this because once I find the descent, that is the this end. that is the force that I'm looking for. So I'll be done there. So I don't need to worry about the tension force on the elevator, all that stuff that I need. So let me erase this. So I just drew this much to real to be able to realize that um, this normal force here is the reaction force pair to the force that I am looking for, which means on the flip side that all I need to do is find the magnitude of the normal force. And I'm done. And this is, by the way, how you should be using the Newton's third law to use that to figure out the uh, magnitude of forces that you might not know directly. So, okay. So that's my first step in standard strategy. My second step is defining coordinate axis. That's uh, easy. Downward. That's going to be my positive x. And I'm kind of done there. I don't need y axis. It's one dimensional problem. Step number three. Uh, um, uh, break up my forces into components, but this is a 1D problem. They only have one component. I don't need to do that. Step number four, I write down my Newton's second law equation. So I have one object, one dimension. I should have one equation. So let me do it this way. I'm going to write it uh, this way. My acceleration is equal to the net force, which will be M1G minus N, M1G minus the normal force divided by the mass. And once again, this is, by the way, something new I'm starting to do, uh, once again, to illustrate this uh, cause and effect relationship. What's on the right-hand side is the cause. The net force causes the acceleration. This is the cause and effect relationship, and I just want to make sure that I get the concept clearly. So, okay, so that's the Newton's second law equation. I'm all done or uh, let me just do a check, counting the number of equations and unknowns. I have one equation, so I better have only one unknown. I know the acceleration, so acceleration is not an unknown for once. I already know it there. Uh, normal, force, oops, uh, normal force is the unknown. So I have one unknown, I'm good, I'm gonna solve for normal force. So doing that, um, so multiply both sides by M1. I have M1A is equal to M1G minus N. I can solve for N by moving this over to left, move this over to right. So I get N is equal to M1G minus M1A. And I want it to be a little bit nice. I can even factor out M1 to get M1 times G minus A. And all I have to do is plug in the numbers and, um, and get normal force n. And by the way, um, I guess sometimes I'll get this question. What value of g should I use? Should I use g equals 9.8 meters per second squared? Uh, if you are using calculator and you want to do that, then sure. It's correct. No problem. Um, and I do want to encourage you to kind of try mental math from time to time. Uh, so I guess for this question, actually, it doesn't matter because he's going to all mess it all up. For most of the homework questions, if you were to use a g is equal to 10 meter per second squared, uh, a lot of times it should work. We set the tolerance high enough, 3% um, tolerance for questions involving g, so that this should uh, work a lot of the time. But, you know, uh, if it somehow doesn't work, just go back to using g equals 9.8. Don't introduce unnecessary rounding errors. Um, so you plug in the numbers, that'll get you and 
and which is technically not the force that they're asking for, but we went through that, uh, went through the thinking process using Newton's third law to get that that is equal in magnitude to the force that they are asking for. So, um, so yeah, that should give you the answer. And um, so, um, you know, this is easier than the questions I covered last semester, but, you know, sometimes I, um, I know I can focus on um, questions that I think are difficult and I leave out people who might be struggling with um, the, the entry level questions that are meant to build up your problem solving skills. And just because ent it's entry level doesn't mean it's easy. I mean, I think I shared this before. This is one of the most difficult courses in your community college career. And um, even our entry level courses, it's like the questions in your math class that you hated the most word problems, and, um, and it takes practice. Uh, uh, interpreting the question, kind of trying to figure out how to translate from what the question says into these mathematical expressions here. And that's what standard strategy is trying to guide you towards. Um, 